What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Leo. Coming to you guys with yet another video. Coming to you guys today with yet another reaction by WrestleMania. 10 WWE title range you totally forgot happened. There have been so many times where a wrestler will win a championship. And when, you know, years down the line, when you look back at it, you would think, and it's like, man, I forgot they held this championship. I forgot they held this title. I forgot this actually happened on this event. And stuff like that. So it's been a mainstay or the, or basically a normality over the last couple of years where we will see a person hold a championship and we forget they even won it. I think one um, example that comes to mind is Randy Orton when he became U.S. champion. I honestly look back at it and I'm like, I remember him winning it, but like the whole title reign, I don't remember at all. So it's just been one of those situations where, yeah, we, me we might remember them winning the title, but them holding the title and actually having a reign with the championship, we don't remember. Some of them have been very short. Some of them have been a little lengthy, and we just still don't remember. But that's just been the case. But we're going to get into this video by WrestleMania, and we're going to see what are his 10 um, WWE title reigns, or his opinion, as far as title reigns go, that people forget. WWE's existence, there have been some incredibly memorable title reigns that are fondly remembered. Yeah. However, WWE are also prone to giving a wrestler a rather unmemorable title reign, and when an image of that specific wrestler is seen with the title in question, fans are left baffled and collectively wonder when on earth that reign actually took place. Yeah. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE title reigns you had no idea happened. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Chris Jericho, the Hardcore Championship. Chris Jericho has won virtually every major championship imaginable, and for the most part, his reigns, specifically in WWE, have been rather memorable. However, yeah. whenever an image on social media is seen that features Jericho with a hardcore title, fans are left a little confused. The majority of WWE fans had no idea that Y2J is a former hardcore champion, and the likely reason for this is because the reign was so incredibly brief. Jericho won the hardcore title on May 28, 2001's edition of Raw by defeating his future tag team partner, The Big Show. His reign would just last a matter of seconds Jericho. as Rhino would proceed to gore Jericho on the stage, ending Jericho's first and only reign as hardcore champion. Number 9. Albert Intercontinental Title Matt Bloom delivered a number of gimmicks throughout his career, but he had his most successful run as Albert in 2001. WWE made the bold decision to have Albert dethrone Kane and for Albert to become Intercontinental Champion. This reign is rarely discussed and it was crazy to think that with all the talent WWE had on their roster in 2001, they gave the win to Albert. Whilst Albert was decent in the ring, he wasn't getting the crowd response that warranted a title win of this magnitude. Albert's reign would last just a few weeks before WWE booked him to drop the title to Lance Storm. Albert winning a title could have worked, that's if he was built up to be a menacing legitimate threat. But the issue was that Albert lacked any ounce of credibility and hadn't won any- I think the thing with him is just, he kind of lacked a lot of things like, like he said, his charisma and he looked pretty much more, he was more of a comedic character. So it really didn't help putting the championship around him because it's like, yeah, he's a champion, but we don't see the person holding the title as a legitimate champion because he hasn't been built up to be a legitimate champion and things like that. So, he major matches before he defeated the Big Red Machine. Number eight, Kalisto, multiple time oh, US. I don't even. I remember him winning it, but I, I remember him doing this whole back and forth thing with with um Alberto, like for the championship. That's all I remember. I don't remember anything else. That he's done as U.S. champion, and I feel like the only reason why they gave him the championship is just because he had that big moment at TLC in 2015 when it was uh, them, when it was him and Sin Cara, I think, the Lucha Dragons. I think that's what they called themselves, the Lucha Dragons, the Usos, and the New Day for the tag team titles in that ladder match. And I think when he had that that spot, um, that I think that's pretty much what catapulted them to even get somewhat of a significant push. Champion. While somewhat popular, Kalisto never broke out to the mid-card scene in WWE, but one shocking fact about Kalisto's WWE career is that he won the US title on two separate occasions. He won the title twice in 2016 and both times he defeated Alberto Del Rio. It's unclear why these two reigns are never discussed, but it's worth noting that the credibility of the US title was at a bit of a low point in 2016. 
John yeah. Cena's US title reign in 2015 made the US title a worthy title. But when Alberto Del Rio became champion, unfortunately, everything went downhill relatively quickly. Number 7. Mark Henry, European Champion when fans often discuss Mark Henry's accomplishments in WWE, they usually reference Henry's critically acclaimed world title reign from 2011. The one reign from Henry's career that is never discussed is when he became a European champion during the Attitude Era. This is a title that legends such as Triple H, Owen Hart and Shawn Michaels have held, but it's almost as if Henry's reign was so incredibly lifeless that fans have erased it from their memory. In a unique booking move, Henry didn't win the European title, instead he was simply awarded it by Jeff Jarrett for helping Jarrett defeat D'Lo Brown. This instantly sent Henry's reign off the rails, as simply giving a wrestler a title brings the credibility and legitimacy of the title into question. Henry's reign was a total dud and by the next pay-per-view he would drop it to D'Lo Brown, bringing an end to one of the most uninspired title reigns of the entire Attitude Era. Number 6. R-Truth – The Hardcore Championship R-Truth is still very much an active member of the WWE roster and it's cr- the, the, the Hardcore Championship? Huh? I am so confused right now. And I'm not even joking you guys, I don't legitimately don't even know he held the Hardcore Championship. I only knew he held the Tag Team US in 24-7 and that was really it. That's the only three titles that I remember him holding. Maybe it was in a time before or something that I don't remember. I don't know. Crazy to think that Truth was in WWE during the Attitude Era. Whilst Truth reign as Kate Quick during the Attitude Era wasn't anything too special, he did win a title during this era, and the title in question would be the Hardcore Type. As I'm in the midst of applying for residency right now, wish me luck, Grammarly has again been a lifesaver with my application. Truth won the infamous title on two separate occasions, and both times occurred at live events. This in all likelihood is the reason why fans question if Truth even won a title during the respective era, as footage of the two wins is hard to come by and WWE didn't even release any official photos of him with the title. Truth would actually discuss the hardcore title wins during an interview with Ryan Satin and the WWE veteran even admitted that he doesn't remember who he defeated to win the title. The hardcore title was so quick and abrupt, I don't even remember who I beat. I think Raven beat me for it. Coming from me, the hardcore championship ain't got shiznit on the 24-7 championship. That title had an article by Forbes magazine. Google that. That championship was doing 20 million views per week. I don't remember the hardcore championship doing none of that. Our truth is just amazing, even in just interviews. Number 5. The Undertaker Hardcore Championship the Undertaker is one of the greatest names to ever lace up a pair of boots, yet his reign in 2001 as Hardcore Champion seems to have been erased from the history books. The dead man defeated Rob Van Dam to win the Hardcore title at the Vengeance pay-per-view, and the visual of The Undertaker with the Hardcore title is somewhat humorous. Now, Unlike do most hard remember him holding the championship. I think this is probably one of the only few that I remember, just because I kind of seen it like later on just because you know like the, the clips that they were showing youtube and stuff like that so that's probably like the only reason why i remember but i do remember a little bit but not too much hardcore title reigns that lasted mere minutes the dead man's reign lasted 58 days which brought a great spotlight to the title Della, and it made right, for some incredibly scary. memorable moments even though the undertaker's reign was entertaining there must be a logical reason why fans and wwe often alienate this part of the undertaker's career it's likely that due to the dead man having such an iconic career the hardcore title just had to be naturally forgotten about in favor of the hall of famous other accomplishments number four christian is european champion Fans were baffled in late 2001 when Christian suddenly appeared on TV as European Champion. This confused fans as nobody had witnessed Christian winning the European title. The last thing fans remembered was Bradshaw being European Champion. While the story goes that Christian defeated Bradshaw to win the title on SmackDown, but due to time constraints, the match was cut from the broadcast. This decision to cut the match spoke volumes in relation to how WWE perceived the European title during this time. The European title was an afterthought, and they didn't even air footage of the title win on Raw the next week. This lack of care is likely why fans forgot this reign even happened, but unlike the other reigns on this list, it's obvious that it doesn't help that footage of the actual title change has never been made available to watch. Number 3. Randy Orton US Championship Randy Orton has solidified himself as an all-time great, but yeah, one of Orton's title yeah, this, reigns has uh, seemingly been- I don't remember. I remember him beating Bobby Roode, I think, at Fastlane become US champion but outside of that I don't remember him holding the championship or having anything else out like with the championship and stuff like that so 
Yeah, it pretty much doesn't help anyway. Been lost in the minds of fans and by extension WWE themselves. In 2018, Orton became US Champion for the first and only time. Orton faced off against Bobby Roode at the Fastlane event and Orton won the match and the title. Orton winning a mid-card title should have led to a run similar to that of John Cena in 2015, but WWE had other ideas. This reign was a complete waste of time, which was a massive shame as the reign had so much potential. Number 2. Jinder Mahal US Championship Speaking of Randy Orton's US now, title reign, too, the individual he dropped the title to somehow managed to have a reign that was even more forgettable. Orton dropped the title to Jinder Mahal in a fatal four-way at WrestleMania 34. The match also featured Bobby Roode and Rusev and going into the match, fans expected Rusev to get the W as this was during the peak of the Rusev Day storyline. Mahal's yeah. reign lasted just eight days before he lost the title to Jeff Hardy, making it one of the most pointless and unmemorable title reigns in company history. WWE clearly had no long-term plans for the once prestigious title and this disappointing booking is no doubt a key factor in there being so many forgotten reigns. And number one, Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre, WWE Tag Team Champions. Throughout WWE history, there have been some tag teams that flew under the radar. This was particularly the case in 2010s when WWE had a habit of throwing two talents together in hoping of creating magic. This occurred when WWE decided to pair up two of the brightest young stars in the company, those being Rhodes and Drew McIntyre. The two would win the tag team titles at the United Champions pay-per-view in 2010 and on paper, the team had a ton of potential. Sadly, the next month at the Bragging Rights pay-per-view, the duo would drop the titles to the unusual team consisting of John Cena and David Otunga, and this would spark the end of their run as a tag team combination. Fast forward to over a decade after their run as a tag team and the two are cemented as main eventers in WWE. If the two ever have a featured feud on TV, WWE may look to mention their prior history. And I hope they do have a feud because I think that feud would be fire. Hopefully Drew does stick around. I don't know if he is or uh, what, what his status is last time I checked. Uh, he was, um, he's just, you know, living in the moment and stuff like that. And we'll see yeah, how that goes. But I do hope they do are able to, you know, keep him around because the guy is a big deal and it's too huge of a guy to let go, you know, as far as competitive wise. And I do think this is a feud that I would love to see play out on, on my um, television screen. Um, you can have Cody win that championship because Drew has already had his moment and everything like that. And, you know, he's he's won the Rumble. He's won a Mania. I will, I, I'm just waiting for Cody to win the big one. And then I think this should be like his first feud after he does win the championship. As tag team champions. The problem with mentioning their established history is that a strong portion of the casual fan base have no idea that they even had a run as tag team champions, so they may opt to pretend like the 35 day reign never even happened. But there you have it, folks 10 WWE title reigns you had. Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show that there, there, are, there it goes to show that there are times in WWE or it's just wrestling where, or just not even WWE, you're just in any other company, like we'll see a moment happen we'll, we'll remember the moment of them winning the championship but when we look at the reign it didn't live up to the hype that people wanted it to be and i think that's just the I thing i've been noticing about a lot of people's championship reigns the moment of them winning is probably like the best moment and a lot of things with the baby faces i've been noticing the moment of the the i feel like they're better at chasing the championship than it is for them to hold the championship because if you look at someone like a Bianca, right, her going after the championship the story of getting to the championship to win it, I think that is the big story right there. But when you have them win it, it's like they don't, you know, continue that story and they don't continue to build that up like they should. So I hope that they may start having more babyface win these championships because it's more basically like heel being dominant dominating the WWE as far as champions go right now. So when they do have Big Face take some of these titles, they not only just use the moment of them winning the championship as a big thing, but after them holding the championship, have the reign be just as good as the story of them win winning it. So I just hope that that's one thing that they do able they are able to fix. Um, but that is the end of the video, guys. Make sure you super kick that like button, Superman punch that post notification bell, and spear that subscribe button. We're on the road to 700 subscribers. We're getting closer and closer to that milestone. So if you guys are new and you come across my channel, please hit the subscribe 
hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free. There's no catch or nothing like that. Um, like I said, we're trying to keep getting all these uh, milestones that we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to that 1,000, to 10,000, to 100,000, to a, a million. So we're, we're gonna. We, that's the ultimate goal. We're trying to get to the biggest milestones that we possibly can in YouTube. So that is the end of the video, guys. I appreciate you guys kicking with me, and I'll see you guys in the next video.